Guys, you've all been asking me about vehicle to grid. I've received many emails, in fact, probably more emails about vehicle to grid than anything else from you over the past two years, literally the last two years. Here in Australia, there is a solution. There is today. Now, a few days, a couple of weeks ago, there was an article on Solar Quotes, one of the biggest websites in Australia saying it's vehicle to grid too hard, it's never going to work, it's a bad idea. I strongly disagree with this because we have a solution today. People just don't know what it is. And this is what it is. Now, I realize there'll be some naysayers to this video. My suggestion is there's always naysayers. Everything I do, there's always naysayers. So don't pay attention to them because there legitimately is a solution. And apparently there's quite a few electric cars already on sale in Australia, which will be capable of vehicle to grid. My car is one of them. I just found this out literally yesterday. I gave a, a speech at the CSIRO um, head office here in Newcastle, and many of you might have seen that online. But what I discovered in the process was somebody there working on vehicle to grid. In fact, one of the people in Australia who are at the forefront of vehicle to grid development, they have just bought an XPeng G6 because it is capable of vehicle to grid. And I didn't even ask this. I didn't wasn't prompted. I said, I was talking to this guy and I'm like, so, you know, what car have you got? And he said, well, you know what, mate? I just saw your car. I just bought one of them. And this is why. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. So guys, yeah, you know, I've owned an XPeng G6 for quite a while. Didn't buy it because it had vehicle to grid capability because I didn't know it did. And I don't think anyone did. Here's the, here's the story behind it though. Probably important to give you the backstory so you have a bit of context here. Vehicle to grid, what is it? V, V2X, V2G, pretty much the same thing. The idea is that instead of just charging your vehicle from the grid or from your solar panels, vehicle to grid enables electric cars to feed electricity back into the grid so you can make money, right? Then your vehicle can be used as a giant battery for your house or for the power grid. And really, if you think about it, like the average battery size, my battery is 25 kilowatt hours. The average battery size is probably about 20 kilowatt hours, maybe even 15. That's pretty small in comparison to the average car battery. The average car battery size is probably 60 to 70 kilowatt hours, which would power your house for a week if you needed it to. If you were conservative on power, you could get away with that. Like in a, a situation where, say, for example, the power goes out. And that's happened to me recently. Uh, where the power was out for three days, people were freaking out, having to go and buy generators, all that kind of crazy stuff. This is a solution to that. So what's happened? Well, a company in Australia called Essential Energy have been testing the Nissan Leaf with vehicle to grid and an old Chademo charger or Chatmo charger. And anyway, it works, but you don't want to use a Nissan Leaf for vehicle to grid. That's just kind of insane. It's one of the worst well, let's be fair, guys. The Nissan Leaf doesn't have a good track record for its battery quality, put it that way. You don't really want to buy a Nissan Leaf anyway. It's sort of like having to buy a, a below average, fairly expensive car um, just to get vehicle to grid doesn't make sense. So what they've done is they've got a Ford F-150 Lightning and they've got basically taken a charger, a vehicle to grid charger, a DC charger, and they've, well, tested it. In many ways, they use heat tests. They use all these different tests to make sure it's actually not going to wreck the car. It's going to work properly and it works. So how does it work? There's only one way right now that we can really definitively say that the Ford F-150 Lightning works, the XPeng G6 works for vehicle to grid. And that is by, uh, it's going to sound, when you hear this, it's going to sound like you're going to think, oh, it's not that good, but actually just wait for it and I'll explain why it is actually really going to work. They used SIG Energy's SIG and Star storage system. This combines a battery and a vehicle to grid charger and an inverter into one. It's three things in one. It, it, to be honest, it sort of looks like a, a wall, it's a combination between a wall charger and a wall battery. So all these things are, things are put into one system. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's going to be too expensive, but actually it's not. Because the government has this $2.3 billion battery incentive, you'd be able to get this system installed, we worked out, for $10,000. So $10,000 to get yourself a battery, a small battery, but still you're going to have an extra battery backup, right? So when your car is out driving, it's brilliant. It's actually a brilliant idea. When you're out driving in your car, let's say you're at work, your home battery 
can charge, you can send that, that charge from your battery into your car if you want to. So you, basically you can then take advantage of the fact that when you're out at work or you're out at the shops or in holidays, or whatever you're doing, you're out for a, a day trip, you can still actually harness that solar power that you otherwise would have been basically wasting. And considering the price is affordable. Now guys, I actually thought this was gonna be out of the out of the price range of many people, I thought it'd be too expensive. But now that the battery, now the government has this battery incentive, and it, remember, st individual states here in Australia also have incentives on top. You might actually get it for less money than what I'm quoting. So as I mentioned before, guys, there's three parts to this system. You can buy different battery sizes. You can get battery modules of five kilowatt hour or eight kilowatt hours. And to be honest, I think if you're gonna partner this with an electric car, you don't need to go any bigger than eight kilowatt hours. That's what I think. And that's what that's the price I've worked out. It's gonna be about $10,000 to get the battery, the DC charger, and the inverter that makes it all work. So your car doesn't need to do anything. Your car can be dumb. It doesn't need to send out information, doesn't need to talk to anything. What happens is that all happens on the other side, right? So you don't need your car to have some special DC ability, some sort of special inbuilt um, chip, which, Apparently the Renault 5 has. That's the only car that we know of in the world that actually has this um, ability to communicate. There's a DC chip in the Renault 5, but I mean, yeah, that's a whole different story. We're not gonna get into that here. So the EV chargers, there's actually two different types of chargers. The cheapest one is four and a half thousand dollars. This is part of this $10,000 price that I'm talking about. And you can pay more, I think it's about $6,000 to get a 25 kilowatt charger. That's a DC charger, right? So you can send that current into your car through your DC charging port. It'll send 12.5 kilowatt to your port or you pay more money for the 25, you can, you can actually charge your car with 25 kilowatt. Even if your car is limited to seven kilowatt AC or 11 kilowatt AC or 22 kilowatt AC as all cars are, there is no car EVs at this point in time that have faster than 22 kilowatt AC charging. And in fact, most don't even go above 11. Even with that restriction, you can still charge your car with these chargers at home with 25 kilowatt charging speed if you want to. So if you want to get home, you're in a rush for whatever reason, or let's say you've got a massive solar system like I do, you can send 25 kilowatt of electricity into your electric car. So it's actually a much better charger than using your AC charging. And the hybrid inverter module comes as part of the system. Now, the thing is, there's two different options there's two different hybrid inverter modules you can only get single phase or three phase the single phase i believe is meant to be capable of 19 kilowatt the three phase is capable of 25 kilowatt now here's the big problem with all this and you're probably aware of this you probably some of the skeptics would have been saying hey hang on a minute sam one problem warranty right warranty is going to be an issue and you're right but you're not right because in this case xpeng have said as soon as they get this signed off, as soon as they get um, the data saying this does work, they will cover this under warranty in Australia. This is the first time that I've heard about this any Chinese car company or any American car company or any German car company. None of them are doing this. None. None of them are doing this. And the reason Xpeng is saying they're doing this, because I've been hearing from them for a while, they've been pushing Xpeng in China to approve AC, using AC to go vehicle to grid. But to be honest, AC is a bit more complicated. So they've been having challenges getting all the getting all the complications worked out. Basically, the distributor here in Australia is saying, you know what, they're so confident, not only are they giving, right now there's a 10 year warranty on the cars, right? And as soon as they get the signed off, basically the data sheet signed off, which they have told me they have on their table, they're working that out. This will be good to go. So guys, the simple answer here to all the questions you've been asking me, which car should I buy? Which car is going to be supporting vehicle to grid? This is the only choice, unless you want to pay $200,000 for a Ford F-150 Lightning. As far as I know, as far as I know, this is it. Now, this could change. I mean, Geely could say, you know what, we're going to offer warranties for our um, EX5. That might work, possibly, potentially, I've heard it might. Uh, BYD might do the same. But none of them have done so yet, and it's been a long time. I mean, let's be frank, we're, we're waiting for these comp companies to come to the party and actually commit to this and no one has done so yet. What I think is gonna happen is, I think 
Xpeng, we're going to look at Xpeng and say, Xpeng, thank you so much. Let's be real, guys. You, you can say I'm sponsored or whatever you want to say, this sort of ridiculous stuff. But the truth is we're going to say thank you because this is going to start a chain reaction. Companies surely will have to, they'll have to compete. People have been waiting, waiting, holding off, holding off, holding off, saying I want vehicle to grid, I want, want vehicle to grid. And the person working, basically the CSIRO, working in collaboration with the government here in Australia, working in collaboration with this company who are at the forefront of vehicle to grid technology. The, the main guy goes out and buys an XPG6 for this, this reason. So I think we've got pretty, pretty clear evidence that the, this is going to be the start of a, revol of a revolution here in Australia. And here are some numbers for you guys. There's 21 million cars on the roads in Australia, 21 million. Eventually, they'll all be electric. That might take 20 years, but we'll get there eventually. So how much electricity do we use in Australia? Well, daily we use about 700 megawatt hours, right? But if the average battery size of an EV is 60 kilowatt hours, you're going to have some utes that will be 120. You're going to have some smaller cars that might be 40. Let's just say the average size is a 60 kilowatt hour battery. It's very conservative. It's probably on the small side. How much, how much electricity could 21 million cars with 60 kilowatt hour batteries generate? Well, nearly twice as much as what the entire Australian grid actually needs. Nearly twice as much. So it's about 1.3 terawatt hours. So 21 million cars would provide Australia with all the battery backup we could possibly need. Keep in mind, we have 4 million households that have solar on their roofs. We have solar farms all over Australia as well as that, right? And wind, and wind power and batteries. Essentially, guys, we are part of a revolution here. We are absolutely crucial to this. The reason the government has approved vehicle to grid, the reason the government is, is sponsoring um, home batteries and sponsoring this kind of setup is because they know this is the best solution for Australia. It's the best solution for individuals. You have to save enormous amounts of money. And to me, it's an absolute no-brainer. $10,000 to have your own battery at home, not a big one, but all that you really need in this situation, having a DC fast charger at home. I mean, I mean, that's crazy. And the ability to make money from sending electricity from your electric car into the grid, right? It's just honestly an absolute no-brainer. So I hope more car companies come to, the, come to the party, but at this point in time, as far as I know, it's only XPeng. Hey, let's wait and see what happens. Let's wait and see what happens. I'm, as you can see, guys, I am excited. I think this video is, I, I've tried to do my best to give you the information, all the information that I know, but if there's something I've missed here, and if you'd like some more information, just send me an email, contact at theelectricviking.com. Now, if you send me an essay, which some people do, I won't have time to read it all. I just can't do that. But if you send me something that's, you know, one or two paragraphs, I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.